وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to go through the life of Uthman ibn Affan رضي الله تعالى عنه his name is Uthman ibn Affan ibn Abi Al-As ibn Umayyat ibn Abd Al-Shams Amir Al-Mu'minin Abu Amr wa Abu Abd Allah Al-Qurashid Al-Umawi he died the year when it was 335 Hijriya the 35th year of the Hijriya, he passed away, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. His name is Uthman, and his father is Affan ibn Abi al-As ibn Umayyat ibn Abd shams So Ibn Abd shams is where he comes to the Prophet through, alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, he's Amir al Mu'minina. He was the leader of the believers. He was the third Khalifa of the Muslimin. Abu Amr wa Abu Abdullah al Qurashi al Umawi who died the, the 35th year of the Hijriya. Al-Dani, he said, عَرَضَ الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم. Uthman presented the Qur'an to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Yani he read the entire Qur'an to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَعَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنَ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنَ السُّلَمِيُّ And Abu Abd al-Rahman al-Sulami, Abdullah ibn Habib, who is a tabi'i, he read the entire Qur'an on Uthman ibn Affan. والمغيرة ابن أبي شي شهاب المغيرة ابن أبي شهابنا هو ذا نظر تابعي هي رد القرآن عن عثمان بن عفان وأبو الأسود وزير بن حبيش all of these are تابعين they read the Quran on عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه and عثمان read the Quran and who he read the Quran on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم عثمان is أحد السابقين الأولين he's from the early people who entered Islam he is called and his nickname is Dhunurain. وصاحب الهجرتين. He did the two hijra. He did the hijra to Abyssinia and he also did the hijra to Medina. And the reason why he was called Dhunuraini, the scholars they mention, is because he married two of the Prophet's daughters, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He married Ruqayyah bint Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ruqayyah, he married her. Uh, before the Prophet وسلم, was sent out as a messenger. And she gave birth to Abdullah uh, and the kunya that he was given was Abu Abdullah. And also she gave birth to a son by the name of Amr, Ruqayya. His mother, Uthman radiallahu anhu's mother is Arwa bintu Quraiz ibn Habib ibn Abd shams and her mother is Al-Bayda'u bint Abd Al-Muttalib ibn Hashim. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he migrated to Abyssinia with his wife Ruqayya bint Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he stayed behind from the battle of Badr. Uthman did not participate in the battle of Badr. He stayed behind from the battle of Badr for his wife Ruqayya, she was feeling sick. Um, and after the Battle of Badr, a few nights after, she passed away Ruqayya, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made a portion for Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the Battle of Badr, spoils of war, even though he didn't participate in. And then after he married, uh, after Ruqayya, he got married to the Prophet's second daughter, Umm Kalthun. He married the second daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uthman radiallahu anhu, as it's reached us, he wasn't excessively tall. He wasn't. Wala bil qasir, and he wasn't short. Hassan al wajh his face was beautiful, mashallah. Yani kabir al lihya, he had a big beard. Yani a big beard is beauty, brothers and sisters. And he used to يَخْطِبُ بِالصُفْرَةِ He used to place saffron on his bed. That color. وَكَانَ قَدْ شَدَّ أَسْنَانُهُ بِالذَّهَبِ 
اوكي عن عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه his teeth يعني he strengthened it with gold so he had a golden tooth and his يعني beard it was um, saffron كبير اللحية but he was vast his beard was very big أبي عمر أبي عبد الله سوري مولى شداد he said رأيت عثمان يخطب I saw عثمان given a خطبة وعليه إزار غليظ ثمنه أربعة دراهم the clothing he was wearing was worth four dirhams okay وريطة كوفية ممشقة he was wearing a kufian يعني ريطة ريطة uh, it's a ملاءة يعني he was wearing a garment made from يعني 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 red okay ضرب اللحم يعني أي خفيف اللحم he was skinny he wasn't very chubby he was skinny طويل اللحية his beard was long حسن الوجه he had a beautiful face ولذلك عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن حزم هي سيد رايت عثمان اي سو عثمان فما رايت ذكرا ولا انثى احسن وجها منه اي نيفر سو ا مان اور ا وومن هو هاد مور اوف ا بيوتيفول فيس ذان هي ديد السائب هي سيد رايت اي سو هيم يصفر لحيته فما رايت شيخا اجمل منه هي واز تشينج ذا كلر اوف هيز بيد اند اي نيفر سو اني وان مور بيوتيفول ذان هيم الحسن هي سيد قال انما سمي عثمان ذا النورين عثمان was called ذا النورين لأن لا نعلم أحدا أغلق بابه على ابنتي بن على ابنتي نبي غيره I never يعني the reason why he was called ذا النورين عثمان was because there was no man who got married to the two daughters of the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام عطية he narrated from أبي سعيد that he said رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رافعا يديه يدعو لعثمان. I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم raise his hands and supplicate for عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه. عبد الرحمن بن سمرة he said جاء عثمان إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. عثمان came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم بألف دينار he came with a thousand دينار حين جهز جيش العسرة when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prepared the army. Uthman bought to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a thousand dinar فَصَبَّهَا فِي عِجْرِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم And he poured the thousand dinars He poured it on the Prophet's thighs alayhi wa sallam فَجَعَلَ يُقَلِّبُهَا بِيَدِهِ The Prophet was turning and tossing the money and the, 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 the money that Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه placed on his thighs He was tossing and he was turning it and he said after that مَا ضَرَّ عُثْمَانَ مَا فَعَلَ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ What Uthman does after today will not harm يعني whatever Uthman does after today is not harm ما ضر عثمان ما عمل بعد اليوم whatever Uthman does after today is not going to harm and Imam Muhammad narrated that, narrated that في مسنده and also Imam Al-Hakim he narrated it in his in his مستدرك and Tirmidhi narrated in his جامع يعني he prepared as in Hassan al-Basri who said جهز عثمان 750 ناقة he prepared Uthman رضي الله عنه he prepared 750 camels he prepared it farasan and 50 horses he prepared it for the battle of Tabuk Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu Al-Muharibiyu he said from Abi Mas'udin an Bishr ibn Bashirin al-Aslami who narrated from his father yani Bishr ibn Bashirin al-Aslami narrated from his father Bishr al-Aslami he said lamma qaddima al-Muhajirun al-Madina when the, the Muhajirun they came to Medina istankaru al-ma'a وكانت لرجل من بني غفار عين يقال لها رومة. There was a man from the people of غفار and he had a يعني spring and he had a water يعني a little well and the people needed water. Okay and it was called this عين was called رومة وكان يبيع منها القربة بمد and he would charge the people for it this man. Okay, and he would charge a person a qirba is like a it's a measurement just to drink one time. He would prepare, he would charge them for it a mud, or a mud, as a price, a good price he would take from it. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, the Prophet said to the man, 
Would you sell us this? Give it to us for a, for Jannah. Uh, 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 you'll get what you give to us here in Jannah. The man then said to the Prophet, he said, li ya ghayraha. I, This is the only water I have. La ذلك, I'm not able to do such a thing. فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ عُثْمَانِ Uthman found out, رضي الله تعالى عنه, that the Prophet requested for water. And this man said this, فَاشْتَرَاهَا Uthman رضي الله عنه sent money over and he sold it, he bought it from that man for what? بِخَمْسَةٍ وَثَلَاثِينَ أَلْفَ دِرْحَمٍ He paid بِخَمْسَةٍ وَثَلَاثِينَ thousand dirham. Okay? And then he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أتجعل مثل الذي جعلت له عينا في الجنة إن اشتريتها Or Messenger of Allah If I buy that well from that man Are you going to give me the same thing that you promised him? Are you going to make for me? يعني when you said to him تبيعها بعين في الجنة Are you going to say the same thing to me that I can get a well in Jannah for it? If I buy it from him The Prophet said yes قال, he then said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, قَدْ اشْتَرَيْتُهَا وَجَعَلْتُهَا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have bought that well from that man and I have made it for the Muslims. This is the type of people the companions were, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. The dunya never meant nothing to them. The, the wealth that they had, giving it out for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala was great in their eyes. That's how Allah raised them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. يعني the wealth that they had, they knew it was something Allah gave to them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why would it be hard to give Allah back what he gave to you in the first place? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ He said, اشترى عُثْمَانُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم الْجَلَّةَ مَرَّتَيْنَ Uthman brought from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم الْجَلَّةَ twice. Abu Hurairah saying this. يَوْمَ رُومَةَ The day of Rumah when he bought the wealth. وَيَوْمَ جَيْشِ الْعُسْرَةِ The day when he prepared the full army for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Aisha mentioned the story. She said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مُضَّجِعًا فِي بَيْتِي كَاشِفًا عَنْ فَخِذَيْهِ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم He was lying on his side, عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the Prophet's thighs were showing. His thighs were showing. Or سَاقَيْهِ or his shin was showing. فَاسْتَأْذَنَ أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ عُمَرُ Abu Bakr asked permission if he could come in. And the Prophet at that moment when Abu Bakr is entering, the Prophet is still lying on his side and his thighs or his shin is showing. Then Umar came in. The Prophet still remained in his position the way he was. He didn't change. وَعَلَى تِلْكَ الْحَالِ The narration mentions. فَتَحَدَّثَا The Prophet conversed with the both of them. ثُمَّ اسْتَأْذَنَا عُثْمَان As soon as Uthman entered, فَجَلَسَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَا وَسَوَّى ثِيَابَهُ The Prophet sat up and he got his cloth, his garment and the Prophet covered himself عليه الصلاة والسلام his thighs. فَدَخَلَ فَتَحَدَّثَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he gave permission for Uthman to enter and the Prophet started to talk to Uthman. فَلَمَّا خَرَجَ When they all left they all left now. Aisha was looking at her husband. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was observing. She was looking. What the Prophet was doing. So when they all left, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Dakhala Abu Bakrin, Abu Bakr entered. Falam tajlis lahu. You didn't sit down when Abu Bakr entered. Thumma dakhala Umar, Umar entered. Falam tahasha lahu. You didn't change from your situation. You stayed, you remained the same. Thumma dakhala Uthman, Uthman entered. Fajalasta wa sawwayta thiyabaka. You sat up and you got, you covered yourself. You, you, you pulled your garments. And then the Prophet said something very powerful here, alayhi salatu wasalam, which really gives us an insight of who Uthman was and what type of person he was. The Prophet, he said, أَلَا أَسْتَحِيِّ مِنْ رَجُلٍ تَسْتَحِيِّ مِنْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The Prophet said, am I not going to be a shy of a man that the angels are shy of? And Imam Muslim narrated this. The angels were shy of Uthman, رضي الله تعالى عنه. And so the Prophet said, why should I not be shy? of a man who the angels are shy of. That is a high status. Brothers and sisters, what we learn here, number one is the, the great quality of being shy. We're living at a time, subhanAllah, when our brothers and our sisters, this quality of being shy is being stripped from them. 
It's been stripped from them. It's been taken from them. It's been snatched from them. They are being encouraged to go online and just do whatever they want. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, shyness is a quality that if you lose it, there isn't anything to stop you anymore. If you lose shyness, the path you, you are going to tread on is very scary. And what awaits you is very dark and dull. That's why the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, One of the passed on wise words that were passed on generation by generation, one nation passed it over to another nation from those wise proverbs that were passed on is if you're not if you don't have the quality of shyness then do what you want in other words if you're not shy you are going to do what you want shyness is that trigger in the mind that when you want to do a certain thing you feel a certain way it holds you back being shy today is looked down at a person's belittled, is ridiculed. Even the one who doesn't insult a shy person would make gestures and sounds that would make a person not want to be shy. Like, for example, oh, he's so shy, which is condescending, belittling. So the person says, no, no I'm not shy, I'm not shy. I, uh, and then he proved, and then, brothers and sisters, be careful, Allah. Uthman radiallahu anhu was a very shy person. And the Prophet ﷺ is also saying, I sh why should I not be shy? If the angels are shy. So Uthman is one who is shy and he's a righteous slave of Allah. Our messenger والسلام, is a shy person. He's saying here, Ala asta'i, should I not be shy? Of? The angels who are a creation, Allah loves subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ya'suna Allah ma amarahum, wa yaf'aluna ma yu'maroon, a creation that don't disobey Allah wa ta'ala. And they do as Allah commands them. يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْطُرُونَ The quality that they have is that they, they're also shy. The angels are shy, brothers and sisters. So the angels are shy of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allahu Akbar. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, Imam Ahmad narrated fi musnadihi wa tirmidhi fi jami'ihi wa ibn Majah. Ibn Majah narrated it in his sunan. And other than them, and an Imam al-Tirmidhi, he said, هذا حديث حسن صحيح. Which is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in Hadith Anis ibn Malik, the Prophet he said, "Arham ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr." Abu Bakr is the most merciful man for this ummah, extremely merciful. A quality that he had he was very kind, soft, merciful. Abu Bakr. Wa ashadhum fi din Allahi Umar, and one of the most staunch people when it comes to the religion of Allah, holds his grounds and is tough on the deen, is Umar radiallahu taala anhu. وَأَصْدَقُهُمْ حَيَاءً عُثْمَان And the shyest is Uthman رضي الله تعالى Uthman was excessively shy. Uthman was excessively shy. Also the hadith, uh, hadith al-Qufi, it mentions ثُمَّ جَاءَ عُثْمَانُ عُثْمَان كَيْمْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet said إِذَنْ لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ عَلَى بَلْوَى تُصِيبُهُ the Prophet sallallahu one day said to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he sought permission if he could enter the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said إِئْذَن لَهُ he said let him come in let Uthman come in وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ and give him the glad tidings of Jannah okay give him the glad tidings of Jannah is that it? no عَلَى بَلْوَى تُصِيبُهُ but a calamity that will befall in him Uthman radiallahu anhu is going to go through a calamity and Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he's going to go to Jannah, lakin ala balwa tusibuhu. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to touch on that later when we speak about the cause of his death. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, kunna naqulu ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Umar used to say, he said, we used to say, and us companions, we used to say, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to say, Abu Bakr, thumma Umar, thumma Uthman. We used to say Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. We used to say that. Yani virtue wise. We used to say Abu Bakr is number one, Uthman is number two, and sorry, Umar is number two, and Uthman is number three. We used to say that. Yani we used to yani grade the companions by putting Abu Bakr first, 
and then Umar second, and Uthman third. We used to do that. And the fact that he says that we used to do this at the time of the Prophet, it benefits us. Yani the Prophet consented to this. Yani the Prophet consented to this. Because if that was not the case, the Prophet would have corrected them and said, who said Abu Bakr is the best? Who said Umar is the best? Who said Uthman is the third? Where did you guys get this from? The Prophet would have corrected them. But the Sahabas, they knew from the Prophet's actions and his speech and what he said, that it was Abu Bakr number one, Umar number two, and Uthman number three. And Imam al-Bukhari, he narrated that in his, uh, in his Sahih, radiyallahu ta'ala, in two places in his Sahih. Muhammad ibn Sirin, he said, كان أعلمه, كان أعلم, كان أعلمهم بالمناسك عثمان The one who knew the يعني مناسك, يعني he, was, he knew the manasik al-hajj and everything was Uthman. From the Sahabas, he knew it the most. Hassan al-Basri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, رَأَيْتُ عُثْمَانَ نَائِمَا I saw Uthman radiyallahu anhu sleeping one day. في المسجد, he was sleeping in the masjid. وَرِدَاءُهُ تَحْتَ رَأْسِهِ This was when he was the leader. I saw him sleeping one day in the masjid. And he took a, his cloth and he placed it as a pillow. فَيَجِيءُ الرَّجُلُ فَيَجْلِسُ إِلَيْهِ A person will come and they will sit next to him. وَيَجِيءُ الرَّجُلُ فَيَجْلِسُ إِلَيْهِ Another person would come and he would sit with, sit, sit, sit with them. Like they were one of his. يعني عثمان رضي الله عنه would sleep there, he would help the people. رضي الله تعالى عنه. Also, Ali Babu Dhabi, he mentioned the Sirah Alamin Ubala. He said, وَصَحَّ مِنْ وُجُوهِمْ It has been authentically transmitted from many different narrations. أَنَّ عُثْمَانَ ذَتْ عُثْمَانَ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ كُلَّهُ فِي رَكْعَةٍ That he read the whole entire Qur'an in one rak'ah. In the Salah. He was praying, his Qiyam. He read the whole entire Qur'an in one rak'ah. Uthman رضي الله عنه did that. And an Imam Dhabi, he said, وَصَحَّ مِنْهُ That's authentically transmitted from him, he said. Anas ibn Malik, he said, إِنَّ حُذَيْفَ تَقَدِمَ عَلَىٰ عُثْمَانِ Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman in one day came to Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman He came to Uthman ibn Affan in one day وَكَانَ يَغْزُوا مَعَ أَهْلِ الْعِرَاقِ قِبَلَ أَرْمِينِيَةِ And Uthman رضي الله عنه was waging war on the people of Iraq يعني he was waging war يعني with the people of Iraq from the people of Armenia And Uthman رضي الله عنه was waging war with the people of Iraq he was waging war on the people of Armenia. فَاجْتَمَعَ فِي ذَلِكَ الْغَزْوُ And in that battle, the people of Sham and the people of Iraq, they met one another. فَتَنَازَعُوا فِي الْقُرْآنِ And they started to dispute one another in the issue of the Qur'an. Until حُذَيْفَة بْنُ الْيَمَانٍ He heard their differences. يعني they were differing in their recitation. حذيفة رضي الله عنه He heard حتى سمع حذيفة من اختلاف ما يكره He heard that which he didn't like. فَرَكِبَ حَتَّى أَتَى عُثْمَانًا So he took his riding beast and he came to Uthman. And he said, يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَدْرِكْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةَ He said, the leader of the believers, quickly get hold of the situation of this ummah قَبْلَ أَنْ يَخْتَلِفُوا فِي الْقُرَارِ اِخْتِلَافَ الْيَهُودِ وَالنَّصَارَى Before they dispute one another like the Christians and the Jews, they disputed فِي الْكُتُبِ in their books. فَفَزِعَ لِذَلِكَ عُثْمَانُ Uthman became يعني, shocked by that statement when he was told. فَأَرْسَلَ إِلَىٰ حَفْصَةَ أُمِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And what he did was, he asked Hafsa to give the Mus'haf that Uthman, uh, sorry, Abu Bakr compiled the Qur'an in. Abu Bakr, he compiled the whole Qur'an from everybody, from the places it was in, and he brought it in one place. Uthman رضي الله عنه now wants to, he wants that Mus'haf from Hafsa. So he requested for Hafsa to bring it to him. He said, Anir Siri, send this to me, Hafsa. Ilayya bil suhufi. Alati jumi'a fiha al Quran, where the Quran was all compiled. Fa arsalat ilayhi biha, so she sent it to him. Then what, when it was brought, Uthman radi anhu, he made a committee. And he set the committee as Zayd ibn Thabit, was Sa'id ibn al As, Abdullah ibn al Zubair, and Abdul Rahman ibn al Harith ibn Hisham. He commanded all of them to write from this Mus'haf. And they did it. فَفَعَلُوا حَتَّى كُتِبَتِ الْمَصَاحِفِ Until all of the Mas'ahif were written. ثُمَّ رَدَّ عُثْمَانُ الصُّحُفَ إِلَى حَفْسَ Then he asked the original one to be returned back to Hafsa. وَأَرْسَلَ إِلَى كُلِّ جُنْدٍ مِنْ أَجْنَادِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِمُصْحَفٍ And from there, he sent a Mus'haf to all of the main stations. يعني he sent one to... 
uh, Mecca, and he sent one to Medina, he sent one to Basra, he sent one to Kufa, يعني, Sham, he sent one to it as well. He sent to all of those main stations. And he requested for every other Mus'haf to be burnt. Okay? That opposes that which has been put in these five, for five Mus'haf. Okay? Suwayd ibn Ghafala, he said, Qala Ali radiallahu anhu. Suwayd ibn Ghafala said, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he said, regarding the, Regarding what Uthman did to regards to the Mus'haf, he said, لو لم يصنعه عثمان لصنعته. If Uthman didn't do what he did, I would have done it, Ali said. يعني, in other words, what Uthman did was a very good thing. Okay? Aisha mentioned, أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جعل يسار عثمان ولون عثمان يتغير فلما كان يوم الدار وحصر فيها قل يا أمير المؤمنين ألا تقاتل قال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عهد إلي عهدا وَإِنِّي صَابِرُ النَّفْسِ عَلَيْهِ Al-Ibam Muhammad narrated in his Musnad and Ibn Hibban that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispered something in the ear of Uthman. The Prophet told him a secret. And Uthman's face color changed from what the Prophet told him. And when the day of Dar, Yawm dar happened, Yawm dar was what? It was the day Uthman was sieged in his house. It's called Yawm dar it was when Uthman was sieged in his house, he couldn't come out. A group of rebels, they يعني, uprised against Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and they wanted to kill him. Okay? So Uthman was sieged in his house. He couldn't come out. So the people they sent to him, they said, are you not going to fight Amir al-Mu'minin? Are you not going to fight these rebels and these people who are trying to harm you and kill you? And then Uthman radiallahu anhu told the people, what the Prophet whispered to him in his ear that day. He said, Inna Rasulullah ahida ilayya ahda. He said that the Prophet took a covenant with me. And me and him had a promise. Wa inni nafsi alayhi. And I'm going to be patient upon the covenant that me and the Prophet had. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. It was mentioned that Abu Bakr al-Adawi, he said, Sa'altu Aisha, I asked Aisha. هل أهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى أحد من أصحابه عند موته؟ When the Prophet was on his deathbed, did he ever whisper to somebody and have a a covenant with him? قالت معاذ الله. She said no. I see reference in Allah for the Prophet to do something like that to just specifically have a covenant with one person. إلا أنه صار عثمان. Except that one day he whispered to Uthman in his ear. أخبره he told him أنه مقتول that he's going to die that he's going to be killed. وأمره أن the Prophet commanded him. أن يكف يده. The Prophet told him, "Don't fight back, Uthman. Uthman, don't fight back. Don't kill them." ولذلك it was mentioned about Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه that when they يعني charged into his house and they intruded and they came with full force and they broke into his doors. When Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه because Uthman is a courageous fighter. Mujahid fi sabilillah. He knows how to fight. So what he did was, so he doesn't get, يعني, he doesn't have a feeling or the thought doesn't come to his head to retaliate, to fight back when he sees the blade and the sword. Because what could happen is when he sees that, he might, that instinct, يعني, feeling of wanting to respond and fight back and defend yourself. So it doesn't enter his heart. What he did was he, Covered his eyes, so he doesn't see the, the the shining of the blade. So he doesn't see the shining of the blade, and no, and then feel like I want to retaliate because he has a promise that he made with the Prophet So he covered his eyes, um, but one thing he saw before he closed his eyes or he covered his eyes, one of the men who charged in, who charged in, pushed Uthman his wife. And then Uthman made a dua against him. He made dua against him. Uh, that Allah wa ta'ala يعني, paralyzes his hand. And that man one day was seen doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Muhammad ibn Sirin said, I saw a man one day doing tawaf around the Kaaba. He was circumambulating around the Kaaba. And he was saying, Allahumma li, oh Allah forgive me, but I don't think you're going to forgive me. Oh Allah forgive me, but I don't think you're going to forgive me. Muhammad ibn Sirin came up to the man and said to him, what a strange dua that you're making 
What type of dua is this that you're making? Oh Allah, forgive me, but I don't know if you're going to forgive me. What is it that you did that you think Allah will not forgive you for? He said, I was the day your muddar, the people who charged into Uthman radiallahu's house and pushed his wife. And if you look at my hand and he unveiled his hand and showed it to Muhammad ibn Sirin, he said to him, can you see my hand? This was the dua that Uthman radiallahu anhu made against me. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uthman died in that way, but he never responded. He never fought back because he made a promise with the Prophet Abdul Rahman ibn Sharudin, he said, and Aliyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Ali ibn Abi Talibin, he said, I, he said, inni la arju an akuna ana wa Uthmanu mimman qala Allahu ta'ala fihim. Ali ibn Abi Talibin, he said, I believe or I hope that I am and Uthman, those who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said regarding them, wa naza'na ma fi sudurihim min ghillin ikhwanan ala sururin mutakabilin, that Allah removed from our hearts anything, animosity and hate in our hearts towards one another. And Allah made us what? Ikhwan and brothers ala sururin mutakabilin. Brothers, when they meet, they have love for one another. Uthman radiallahu anhu was killed when there was 18 days remaining of, from the remaining of the month of Dil Hijjah. After, the, after Salat al Asr, he was buried in Baqiyah. Okay? And he was at that time uh, 82 uh, years of age. And that's the strongest opinion. And Imam al Dhahabi authenticated in his Kitab Sir Alami and Nubala. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdih. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.